Hello, welcome to Jewish Culture and Jewish Awareness. My name is Dustin Hausner. I'm the Jewish Outreach and Program Director at the Wayne YMCA. Our Jewish program is funded through the Jewish Federation of Northern New Jersey. So today I'm very happy with um, this episode because I get to interview someone I particularly like. And if you have followed the show before, or even if you just pay attention to that introduction, you always hear me say, I'm the Jewish Outreach and Program Director at the Wayne YMCA. So today I actually have the privilege of interviewing the Executive Director of the Wayne YMCA. So um, I would like to, Laura, it's so wonderful to have you with us today. Thank you, Dustin. I appreciate the invitation. Absolutely. So before we get into some of the um, interesting things going on at the Wayne Y on uh, 2021, um, for those who haven't had the pleasure to either meet you yet or those who just you know, haven't had an opportunity to come to the Wayne Y MCA, I was wondering if you could talk uh, just a little bit about yourself and in your role. Sure, absolutely. So um, let's see, today is June, or June, don't I wish it was June, uh, <laughs> January 5th, 2021. Uh, two days ago, I, I celebrated my four-year anniversary here at the Wayne YMCA as the executive director. Um, prior to that, um, I, I served at two other YMCAs um, in different roles. Um, but overall, I've been in the nonprofit sector in various uh, roles and responsibilities since 1988. Long time now. So I was just a baby when all this happened. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I've been with the YMCA movement. Um, I started with the Y movement in 2003. Uh, I will tell you that I, I wish I had discovered the Y as an employee earlier, uh, because I really have enjoyed working for the Y, uh, supporting our cause of strengthening community. Um, and, you know, I've been a part of the Y as a member, um, since I was a toddler, um, I learned to swim at the YMCA in Jersey City, New Jersey. Um, I swam on their swim team. As a matter of fact, there's probably, uh, you might be able to see it. There's this little patch right over there. It says Jersey City YMCA swim team. So I have a long history with the Y. I've, where in any community that I've lived in, I have been a member. Um, and so uh, I very much enjoy enjoy what I do and the people that I work with and the opportunity to not only um, have a, a really terrific staff team, but a great group of members and the opportunity to impact the community at large. Well, that's fantastic. Congratulations again on your four years. So Thank you. you yes, it's hard to believe. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I will ask before, again, we go into uh, the programming and things going on now. Um, I do, when I tell people about my current position, there is sometimes a bit of a curiosity about it because the Wayne YMCA, because the YMCA in general doesn't usually have this particular program. They do a lot of wonderful community outreach, a lot of great programs. This is very unique to the Wayne Y particularly. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about, um, you know, how, why there is a Jewish program with the mm -hmm. Wayne YMCA. Absolutely. So um, prior to 2011, this fantastic facility uh, was the YMHA, YMYWHA of Northern Westchester. Uh, Westchester, I'm sorry. I'm like in Westchester County now, Northern New Jersey. Um, and um, in the uh, probably negotiations started probably around 2010, but in 2011, um, the YMHA and uh, the Metro Y of the Oranges uh, came to an integration agreement that would allow the Y um, to basically take over management of the facility and operating as a YMCA. Um, and uh, the YMHA remained uh, in control of the facility as, as owners of the facility. And so we we're basically operating the facility as a YMCA. Um, what's you know, interesting because it, there's such a long and strong Jewish tradition here, um, as you might imagine, that um, as a part of the integration, um, the Y made a commitment to sustaining that long, um, strong Jewish tradition. And um, it's done in a number of ways, including uh, preserving some of the Jewish holidays and other practices, but also, um, you know, I, I, although I wasn't there at the time, um, the Jewish Federation did step in to provide funding so that we could maintain the presence of a Jewish program director at the facility so that there would be somebody dedicated to spearheading that, that work going forward. Um, I will tell you that in 2016, when I was interviewing for this position, uh, one of the things that attracted me to this particular YMCA 
is that um, it was so it was clear to me how richly diverse the community was. And I was just amazed by the fact that we had somebody who was dedicated to be able to not only explore Jewish traditions and, and, and teachings, but, um, but to really have that be an opportunity for all of our members to learn more about each other. Because, you know, as, as we've talked about before, Dustin, I think where tolerance really comes in is our ability to understand each other. Um, and to know each other. And the only way we really can know each other is if we spend time sitting down and learning. And so, uh, so that was very attractive to me um, as somebody committed to diversity and inclusion. And um, you know, I proud, pride myself on the fact that you know, our branch really does take a leadership role within our association in this area. And, um, and I'm very grateful, as I've expressed to you, to have you in that lead role here because uh, you definitely bring a unique perspective, um, and uh, and I think that's really only enhancing our position in the community. Well, I, I appreciate you sharing the history and uh, your kind words, and of course, this is now recorded, so I have it forever. You uh, have it forever. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I do want to discuss, and to me, this is really important. So, you know, the YMCA is such a well-known entity and brand, and I think most people have such a positive relationship with it because of some of the things you mentioned, all you know, the different programmings that focus on tolerance and community-based. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about some of the work that, um, unfortunately, the why I would say did pre-coronavirus, because um, obviously everyone has been impacted because of the coronavirus. And then if you can talk, we can move into, you know, since it took, since it really hit um, a number of months ago, you know, what have been the precautions that have been taken? What are some of the programs that are open and, you know, available for anyone who's interested? So absolutely. Please. So, uh, you know, one, uh, I think one benefit to when I came to the YMCA as a movement is that it was right at the cusp of the Y really beginning to recenter and refocus in on some core, um, core principles um, from our founding as an organization. Um, you know, I think all, all organizations go through iterations throughout their existence and, and we tend to respond to what's going on in the marketplace around us. And, you know, in the, um, in the eighties and the nineties, you know, there was a lot of competition in the fitness world, right? That was really the explosion of, of fitness becoming a thing. And, you know, so the why as a movement really had to compete with that. And, and so a lot of the focus became on the health and wellness and the fitness and, you know, the exercise classes and, and, and the equipment and, you know, all of this other stuff, right? The amenities. And um, under the leadership of the CEO of our national organization at the time um, in the early 2000s, he really began to refocus the movement on, um, on health and wellness from um, really looking at chronic conditions and looking at what is going on in our country and, and examining the health of our nation and where that was tracking at the time. So now we're talking about early 2000 here. And so what, what came to be is this uh, movement um, around uh, building healthier, commu healthier communities. So it was actually called pioneering healthier communities. And at the time, um, a lot of the focus was on reducing childhood obesity. Um, this is right around the time that I came to the, to the movement. Um, and it was a very exciting time because uh, we were not only addressing that, but we were really beginning to look at things related to diabetes prevention. Um, we're looking at how can we support adult cancer survivors who are in treatment or, or newly finished with treatment. And we really began this focus in on looking at the, the, the greater health of the nation. And, and as we became more educated about that, um, the why has is, is really dipped its toes and now complete feet and more into um, looking at health equity and issues around equity and how equity impacts the health of not only individuals, but, but whole communities, entire communities. And so, um, and so prior to, you know, prior to and since COVID, um, a lot of the work that we were doing here at this YMCA, as well as throughout the country, 
was focused in on how can we improve the health of the nation, um, you know, and strengthen communities. And and you know, a strong community is a healthy community. Um, and so, how can how can we develop strategies for that here in Wayne? You know, a lot of that has been working with community partners. Um, you know, from St. Joseph's uh, Hospital in Wayne uh, to Wayne Township. Um, you know, we've really taken an approach where we partner with important local um, organizations to help us um, multiply the benefit of our work because we can't do it by ourselves. You know, the, to really impact the health of the community, you really you, you had to look at the whole aspect. And, and health is multi multi dimensional. You know, it's not just my blood pressure. It is my blood pressure, but it's also my mental health. You know, it's my emotional health. Um, it's, is how healthy is a community to live in? You know, is there, is there a lot of pollution? Are there safe streets? Um, are there sidewalks to walk on? I mean, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a different kind of approach. And so, um, I am pleased to know that in, in my career that, um, that the Y has kind of refocused on what I would consider mission work. And, and I will tell you that I haven't seen that in greater, um, uh, evidence than since COVID hit. Um, because as everybody else around the United States um, in mid-March, you know, we were forced to close our doors. And, um, and it was a, a, a very surreal moment, you know, leaving the Y that day and, you know, packing up some work to do, thinking that we we're only going to be closed for a couple of weeks. And a couple of weeks turned into a couple of months and then a couple more months. And so, um, but even though we closed our physical doors in the building, the why was never closed, right? We, we did what most people did, right? We, we used that word pivot and we pivoted to, uh, to other work that we could do um, in the current situation. And, and that work really boiled down to key functions. One, first immediate response was uh, responding to the need for childcare for essential workers. So everybody, you know, who, who needed to provide essential services, you know, they needed a, place, a safe place for their children to be cared for. And so a number of our branches were able to prefer, provide emergency child care. Um, one of the things that the Wayne facility latched onto very quickly uh, was mobilizing with our community partners to start a, a food distribution program um, to support not only Wayne, Wayne residents, but also residents in the immediate area uh, to be able to distribute food, um, what, what has come to be a weekly basis um, since April. Um, we could not have done this without our partners in the community. I mean, from the school nurses in the Wayne Public Schools um, to uh, the health department, in Wayne Township, um, to local grassroots organizations and other nonprofit organizations coming together under the banner, banner of Wayne United um, to not only raise the, uh, the food resources, but also some financial resources to allow us to support the community during these, these very difficult times. Um, you know, we called, we have a number of seniors in, in, our, in our Y community, and uh, we did senior checks just to call to see how people were doing because, you know, as we know during this time, you know, we're being starved of the thing that we all need and that's relationships, right? And that physical contact. And so just having somebody be able to pick up a phone and call and check in. And we had some of our, the children in our childcare programs um, make cards and just, just to let people know that we're thinking about you and, and that we, we can't wait for you to come back, um, back to, you know, be with us in a physical presence. And so while, while we had to close our doors, you know, basically until June, when we finally could start doing some outdoor activities, um, we never stopped working. And, um, and we really, we are very grateful to the members who stuck with us during that time, because without their help, we would not be doing any of this. Um, and so that's, that's the power of a Y community. So, I mean, first of all, I think the fact that in the situation that obviously is something beyond anything anyone could have expected or predicted in 2020. You know, the fact that the Y was able to come together to still do the virtual programming, to still do the childcare, and especially the food distribution, which, you know, for anyone who's been there or has seen it, you know, unfortunately you have very long lines, but it's because there is so much need. And luckily, Y with the partners has done an incredible job 
giving boxes and giving food to as many families as possible. So personally, I was incredibly proud seeing the white do that just as a staff member and as a yeah. part of the team. But but I want to go to something a little bit more positive in the sense that, you know, why shut down for a while, like a lot of businesses and a lot of nonprofits did, then we reopened. And I think there was a lot of feeling of great happiness, but I think like many people, understandably so, there's a little bit of trepidation that, okay, if I go into the building, am I, am I safe? Am I able to do the things I wanted to do before? Are things different now? So, you know, since reopening, and I do want to highlight that, you know, you were open during the summer and now it's winter time. So there's obviously some differences, but, you know, can you run through a little bit for anyone who's interested in coming back or who just, you know, is, is curious in general, you know, what are the standards and practices that have been implemented? Why, what are the programs that are currently available at the Y? Sure. So um, I was uh, very um, proud to be asked by our chief operating officer back in, um, shortly after we, we, uh, we closed to head um, our uh, relaunch team for the association and trying to figure out how we were gonna safely relaunch and I think one of the reasons I was asked to do this is because, um, you know, beyond a very personal interest in understanding the, this uh, pandemic, this virus, and what the best practices would be, um, is that I was just deeply committed to making sure that we operated as an association as safely as, as possible. And so, um, so I really threw myself into all the research, I, you know, um, learning from some key, you know, and well-respected epidemiologists on best practices and um, researching other YMCAs that had started opening because some Ys had started opening in other parts of the country, learning from their experience. And we basically put together various playbooks that are helping guide our, our, our practices, whether it's the YMCA as a whole or whether it's our childcare, because, uh, there are certain rules that the state have that may be a little bit different than operating the rest of the facility. So we have these playbooks and in the playbooks, it details, um, you know, what our practices, what our health and safety practices are. To give you a picture would probably be the best way to, to, to do this. So when you come to the YMCA um, during the summer, everybody uh, before their class, our classes were all held outside at that point, um, various places, we finally settled on the green that is in the middle of the Y once the township gave us permission to basically have people walk inside and then go outside. So we needed special permission for that. So that's to highlight the fact that everything we do, we consult with the health department on. And we basically get them to say, yes, you can proceed. Um, I think that's really, really important to know that the health department knows everything that we're doing here at the Y. Um, and so uh, even if you were outside, you still went through a health screening. Our basic health screening is we, uh, we take your temperature uh, we either use a wrist thermometer or a forehead thermometer. And uh, we ask you key questions about your potential exposure or symptoms to COVID. Um, if you uh, answer no to all the questions and you don't have a temperature of more than 100.3, you're allowed to participate in the programs. Um, while we were outdoors, mask wearing was not required um, of our uh, participants because we were outdoors. And even though we were outdoors, we still uh, observed all the social distancing that was required um, and suggested by the CDC. Once we began the process of moving inside, uh, which was a slow, slow process, excuse me for that, um, we, uh, we basically had to wait for the governor to give us permission um, at each stage of the game that we could re-enter the building. The first thing that opened inside other than childcare uh, was the pool. Um, and so now our screening process is the same, except now people are actually coming into, into, into the building. Um, and so they go through the same process. Um, we have a, a friendly screener right in the vestibule of the YMCA. We run through the questions, uh, including whether or not asking whether or not you've traveled um, over the course of um, the, the last few days uh, to observe the travel advisory in the state of New Jersey. We take your temperature and then you go ahead and move into the facility. Once in the, every, as you approach the facility and, and you're in the facility, masks are required by everybody. Um, the only place where masks are not required is if you're physically in the pool. Um, so, and that's, you know, that's, that's 
obviously for, for safety reasons. Um, other than that, you know, we really, uh, we, we make sure everybody is masked up. If you are going to parts of the facility, for example, the fitness center in our lobby, we have uh, small uh, spray bottles with um, a disinfectant, not a very mild, but effective disinfectant. So don't need to be concerned about a lot of chemicals. And we ask members to clean anything that they are touching. Basically, if you've touched it, then we ask you to spray it down. Um, once, uh, once a member leaves the wellness areas, the staff then come back and follow them and clean up after them. So there's this constant process of, of cleaning just to make sure that if the member wasn't thorough enough that we, that we step in and do it. At, um, at 12 o'clock every day, uh, or at least during the weekday, we close the facility for two hours and then we do a deep cleaning. And that what a deep cleaning entails is not only um, physically with bottles and you know paper towels, but we, we have a UV light disinfectant system, we have a fogging system, and we'll go into those main spaces that members use and we will do another layer of disinfecting. Um, and that's so that the, when the next half of members come in for the rest of the day, they're coming into an equally clean facility as it was when the first members came in. Uh, we have an evening crew that cleans overnight. Um, and so uh, we've eliminated a lot of our, our gathering areas. So one of my favorite places in this YMCA was the lobby um, because we had all this beautiful furniture that it really encouraged gathering and, and, and meeting other people. But because of COVID, we've had to eliminate that. So this furniture is in storage for now. And uh, we will go back to bringing that together once we know um, the world has come back to, to something resembling normal. Um, for the most part, the Y is open and we're doing everything, we, most everything that we were doing beforehand, but in a much limited basis. Um, you know, the governor has strict capacity limits to the spaces in the facility, um, which limits the number of people that we can have in any one space. So, um, so yes, the fitness center is open. Uh, we have we have broken it up into two rooms so that there can be more space. The pool is opened, um, all the the basketball courts back open. We have group exercise classes. We do have some senior classes and senior social things on Wednesdays, um, and so we are as we are as, as open as we can be. Um, we are open as much as the governor has allowed us to be, um, and you know for the most part, I think members really appreciate the practices. Um, you know, when you, when you leave, you, you put your spray bottle back down on another table and, and then we spray the spray bottle. Um, and so this constant state of making sure our surfaces are clean and if our surfaces are clean and if everybody's wearing their mask, uh, we really are providing the safest environment possible. Well, one thing I would like to just ask about is, um, again, I think you painted a very good picture of kind of the different not only checks and balances there are for making sure that we're CDC compliant, but also what programs are available. Um, I want to ask you in regards to registering uh, mm -hmm. for these programs, because previously there was much pre-COVID, it was very, you know, you walk in, you, you know, can set something up at the front desk, you know, you can go to things. But obviously, as you mentioned, with, you know, restrictions on how many people you can have in a space, plus doing CDC guidelines, if a person was interested in let's say doing pool or was interested in the childcare, you know, is there certain ways people have to register now or a way that people can participate in these things? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so because of the capacity restrictions, when we first reopened the indoor facility, uh, we put in place a reservation system um, so that you could reserve your spot in the pool. You could reserve your spot in a group exercise class. Uh, because there were a, a limit. So uh, the, the limit to the pool, for, for example, for lap swim, the governor, the state will only allow one person per lane for lap swimming. So that means only six people can swim. If we, if we didn't have a reservation system, you run the risk of 12 people showing up and nobody and hardly people be able to swim. So we do have a reservation system. It's, it's fairly easy um, online process where you can just you know, select the time of the day that you're looking to do and register on your own, or you can always call the front desk and our staff can take care of it for you. Um, you can reserve uh, as early as uh, two days before, 48 hours beforehand. And we're using the reservation system currently for, um, for the pool, uh, for our group exercise classes, 
um, for the gymnasium for playing basketball as well as squash um, because they they have stricter limits. Um, the fitness center, you can basically come when you when you wish to. Um, we have we're finding over the course of probably the last six weeks, the one of the busiest times is in the evening. Um, and so there are times where if we've reached our physical capacity with participants, we will encourage members to use the other fitness room uh, that we established uh, in the front part of the building. So, um, so at this point, we can pretty much accommodate everybody. Um, but the reservation system does make sure that you have a guaranteed spot um, so that when you come to the Y, you won't be disappointed. Very good. So in regards to the future, because obviously uh, 2021 just started and mm -hmm. Thank goodness there are signs of, you know, obviously the vaccines are out and, you know, um, we'll, we'll see what happens because if we've learned anything from 2020, anything could happen at any time, sadly. Mm -hmm. um, but what are your hopes for 2021 in regards to the Wayne Y, whether it's continuing the programs you have now, whether it's, you know, hoping to open up much more fully, you know, by the end of the year, what are your hopes for the Y, the y and also what are things that thinking about this whole situation, you know, what have you found has been some of the great accomplishments of the Y? I know you mentioned a little bit with the food drive and uh, continuing the programs for, you know, workers who needed them, but, you know, what, is, what do you see? So, I mean, I think my greatest wish for 2021 is that, you know, as a, a small community and as large community, as a nation and as a world, that we, we can find our way back to each other. And, and finding ways to work together um, to, to make what has been such a very, very difficult situation better. Um, and there's a lot of healing that needs to happen um, and not just from COVID. Um, and so I think that that is for me, one of the greatest hopes I have, you know, if I have a resolution for, you know, our country and our world for 2021 is that we can, we can find our way back um, to be focused in on the, on the greater good um, and, um, and that obviously that we find better health, you know, that the whole world finds better health, you know, for the why, I mean, you know, obviously, um, there are many things that are not in our control, um, because we do operate under, you know, the, the rules that the department of health has set down. And so it is my hope that, you know, as, as, uh, the coronavirus begins to subside, which I hope to see sometime after March, as the vaccine becomes more readily available, um, that uh, we will begin to have uh, larger capacity, um, the ability to bring larger numbers of people to the facility, so increase our capacity from 25% now, maybe maybe the next step is 50%, um, so that we can begin to, the process of serving more people. Um, you know, I look forward to I look forward to the spring and being able to go back outside again. I think that our members really enjoyed exercising outdoors. Um, and um, it was just such a great environment. It just felt good to be outside after being cooped up in our houses for so long. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I'm looking forward to summer camp. Um, you know, we ran summer camp last year um, and you know, for a limited number of, of families and their children. But I will tell you, Dustin, that, you know, the, the times that I was helping with day camp here right on our campus, um, even though it all looked very different, it felt very normal, you know, because this is what we do, right? You know, this is, you know, kids, kids get to be kids, you know, kids get to play, form relationships and do all those things that you do in day camp. And so I really look forward to camp. Um, and by the fall, you know, my hope is that we really are are back to, you know, as normal as it could be in a post pandemic environment. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping children don't have to work, you know, don't have to um, learn remotely, um, that they'll be in their classrooms with their classmates and their teachers safely um, without worry and concern. Um, you know, I think those are the things that I, I hope for the most. I, I, I hope that our, our need for food distribution lessons, um, I never ever expected that we would still be seeing, you know, up to 200 families a week uh, still needing our assistance. Um, I, that is going to be for me an indicator that we're starting to come out of this. But, you know, as, as you and I have discussed, Dustin, it's, 
you know, even when, even when um, coronavirus is under control, it's going to take a while for the economy to recover and, um, and for people to feel comfortable. And that's, that's the environment we're trying to create here is just, we want that environment to be where people feel comfortable coming back. They trust that we're, we're taking, we're going to take care of everybody. And so, um, so by the time the fall comes along, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to see more and more members, you know, um, as our capacity starts to increase. Well, that's actually a very good segue to the question I was going to ask you. So it works perfectly. Um, I was going to ask you in regards to members, as as much as we're working in capacity, as many as many other wonderful nonprofits and YMCA's and so forth, you know, there's been a hit um, when it comes to membership. Just you know, people either not able to or you know haven't gone out. So you know, why stay? There, there's just there's been a drop. That's just kind of been the situation. And I'm curious. If you could talk to the individual watching this or individuals watching, um, you know, asking about, you know, membership and being part of the why, if you can kind of, the importance of why it's important to continue memberships and staying involved, especially during these, these mm -hmm. hectic times. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that, you know, for me, my, my, me as a member of the why, like basically most of my life, um, it's, it's never really been about, um, the membership. It's always been about feeling like I was part of a community, you know? I mean, if I wanted to just work out, um, I could go to someplace else, right. That just has exercise equipment, but I always was part of the why because there was more to the why than just the exercise equipment. And so for me, it was always the community. And so I think if there, if there's a value that I put on, a membership at the YMCA, it, it really is the value you find of being part of something bigger than just, you know, a gym and, and a place to swim. Um, and, you know, that you really are, I, I've described it um, to you and others, Dustin, is I, I when I, you know, I, I want members to come in the morning to, you know, exercise, maybe take a water fitness class. And then I want them to stay and have coffee with their friends you know, in the cafe. And then I want them to stay a little bit longer and maybe enjoy one of your programs, right? And where, they, where they'll spend a part of their day with us because we are their community. And so, you know, when I look at membership to the Y, I look at it as an investment in myself as well as an investment in my community. And I want everybody to have a Y experience. And, and there are plenty of people that we know can't afford a Y experience or, or any other type of experience. And, and that should never be a reason to not reach out to the Y because we're here to help. You know, we, we, we have a very, you know, uh, rigorous financial assistance program um, to really help anybody who's experiencing any kind of financial difficulty to have a Y experience. Um, that is by far is my, my greatest, you know, the greatest thing for me is I want everybody to have that experience. You know, every child, every senior, you know, every new parent, you know, getting ready to raise a young family, um, you know, young middle school kids who are looking for a safe place to be after school, everybody should have the opportunity to have a Y experience. So, um, so for me, I think that, yes, membership is definitely down as it is with, with most organizations. Um, but we continue to plug away and, and let people know that we are open. I mean, because sometimes that's half the battle, right, is making sure that people know you're open. Um, and then trying to meet as many of people's needs as we, as we possibly can right now. So we encourage everybody, you know, if you're, if you're on hold or, or you're still on the fence about coming back to the Y, you know, we are more than happy to schedule a one-on-one -on -one time to walk you through to see how we're doing what we're doing. Um, you know, if you, if you've never been a member of the Y, we, oh, we have plenty of people here that are willing to talk to you about what a Y membership would look like. Um, but, you know, I would encourage everybody at a time where we have been so isolated from each other now more than ever, we need community. And, um, and the Y is that in, 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 in Wayne, New Jersey. So for anyone out there who has listened to all this and is curious about learning more about what programs you have, about what great events you have. Um, just a very quick shout out um, to the theater department who did a wonderful um, ELF program that was online and digital. That was amazing. Um, if anyone wants to learn more about what's going on with the Wayne Y, what are the best places for them to search, follow, call? What, what are the best places for them to be in touch and contact? 
Sure. So, I mean, digitally, um, you know, you can go to WayneYMCA.org um, to get more information about uh, about the why and what our programs are. Um, you know, we are on Facebook and Instagram, also at at Wayne YMCA. Um, you know, I think that uh, obviously calling is always a good thing. Um, you know, there's always somebody to answer the phone, and if there isn't, you know, we can definitely get back to you. Um, and, you know, obviously, if you go to our website, um, if you look under, you know, about us, you'll, you'll see all the email addresses for all the staff, the key staff team. And so if you'd want to reach out to me or any other member of my team personally, um, you can find us that way. You can also just come up to the parking lot, park your car and come to the doors. Um, we're happy to have you in and to give you a tour um, or, or just to let you see what it looks like now, because it definitely looks different um, than it used to. So, and I just wanted to reiterate the uh, the safety precautions I've been taking with the Y. Everyone wears masks. Everyone gets checked in. Um, you know, employees self screen. You know, it's very safe. As people who watch my show know, you know, sometimes my background's different because I'm at the Y myself. It, it's they've done a wonderful job trying to be as safe and as secure as possible for the staff and members. And I do want to give kudos, uh, Laura, to you and the wonderful team that has been working hard around the clock to keep that uh, possible. So. Um, absolutely. So um, I do want to uh, thank you, Laura, for taking the time to go over the why with us. Tell us a little bit about yourself, about the importance of supporting the why. Um, you out there watching, I want to wish you good safety, um, good health. Uh, Laura, thank you again for taking the time to speak to us today. I appreciate the invitation, Dustin. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Huh?